All right. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to learn how to use the servo on the make block. So the first thing you need to do is to open up the test servo example code that comes with your make block library. So reminder, you go to file examples, you scroll down to make block, and you're going to find a bunch of example folders. You're going to go to the me servo and there's two servo ones one is using a knob to control the servo we don't have that we're going to use just the test servo which runs the servo automatically and then we're going to modify that code so the test servo code looks something like this code right here so reminder at the top this is these include statements these are the files that the arduino needs to have to run properly so as long as you've installed the library you don't have to worry about those just don't erase those includes you need those everything in gray with the slashes in front are comments that's just for the users to understand what they're doing so you do need two parts to make this servo successful you need the servo it says two servos we're just going to use one right now we use one servo and what's called the rg25 adapter and why wonderful assistant will show the rj25 adapter is sitting on right now on top of my robot and has like that telephone cable sticking into it so can my assistant point to the rj25 adapter it's the one on sitting on top with the telephone cable stuck into it that little ribbon cable the thing, the highest thing on the robot, sitting on top. Point to it. That. Closer. We don't see your finger. There you go. Right there. That's the RJ25 adapter. So in the RJ25 adapter, you have a cable that run, plugs into the adapter and into the robot controller. So depending on what port you plug it into, you'll have to code that into the robot. I plugged it into port 6. But that's not the default in the code. You can change the default if you want. Um, you also have two places to plug in servos. We're only using one servo, so I have one servo plugged in. I have it plugged into, I believe it's slot one. Let's see if we can see. Does it say slot one if we zoom in there? I think that's slot one. So yeah, is that right? I plugged it in as slot one. But you can also plug it into slot two. So let me zoom back out here okay the other thing is the servo right here mounted and hooked up to slot one um, right now it says you can plug in the rj25 adapter to any port with a yellow tag so that's port 3 to port 8 your code will say port 3 i changed my code to port 6 because that's where i plugged it in but if you don't want to change your your um, code just make sure you plug it into the same port it says on the code right now it's port 3 on yours if you look at the default one. So these first lines of code, you don't want to change those. Those just set up the servo to run. Now it's using servo two. If you're not using servo two, you can delete the servo two lines if you want. Or I always like to do instead of deleting, I like to comment out so I know what I've deleted in case I have to bring it back. So I'm going to comment out my, and you can follow along if you like, and comment out the servo, anything that says servo2. So those two lines that say servo2, I'm going to comment those out. Now, the setup is what runs once. So anything in void setup only runs once during the code. At the very beginning of the program, it'll run this. So whenever you have a, a, the word void, basically that just means what's following the word void is a function or something that's going to happen with the robot. In this case, this is the setup function which runs at the very beginning when you turn on the robot um, and everything between these two brackets the end and the begin bracket is what's run during the setup notice one more thing a lot of people make a mistake and they put a semicolon after this void setup you do not have a semicolon here whenever you're following code with brackets you don't put semicolons whether that's an if then statement or a void setup statement you never put a semicolon here if you're following it with brackets so now we're following with these brackets and we're going to set up servo one and servo two and attach it to the right pin so here it says you're attaching servo n to port pin one basically that attaches it to slot one of the servo object okay so we connected it to, to slot one so that's all correct um, i'm going to comment out the servo two again because we don't need that so i'm going to comment out using 
the slashes. Now servo2 is commented out. Right. Again, don't change any of this code. Leave all this code that I highlighted. You're not going to play around with that with the exception of taking out the servo2 stuff because we're only using one servo. Now we get to the good part. This is the loop. So the void loop is the actual program that will run over and over and over again once you turn on your robot. Um, so what it says, this first line, what it does is it sets the servo position to a certain value. So we're setting it to the zero value. In other words, we're setting it at zero degrees. So we're going to set the servo to zero degrees. Then I'll comment out servo2 because I'm not doing with anything with servo2. After we set it to zero degrees, we're going to wait for 2,000 milliseconds, which is two seconds. Then we're going to move the servo. When you do a write, you're basically sending a command to the servo. We're going to send a 180 degree command. So we're going to rotate that servo 180 degrees. Then we're going to do the same thing with servo2, but I don't have a servo2. I could comment out. By the way, if you don't have a servo2 and you don't comment it out, nothing will happen. You have nothing to move. It's fine. But just for the ease of use, I will take that out. And we're going to wait another 2,000 milliseconds, two seconds, and then we're going to loop back to the beginning of the loop. So we're going to keep going from 0 to 180, from 0 to 180, over and over again. So now let's try um, hook up your make block robot to the USB cord. And make sure you always have the serial port right. You always pick the last serial port, not COM1. And then you're going to go to, uh, you can check the verify first to make sure that you have no errors, typo errors. So no errors right there, compiling sketch. No errors found, now I can download. So now it gave me a warning, but that's not the same as an error, so don't worry. If it said, now it's going to be uploading. So let's take a look. So it should start there, go from this angle, which is 0 degrees, to 180 degrees. And that goes the full length of motion. You cannot go further than that. So if I don't want to go that far, let's say I only want to go instead of going 180 degrees, instead of sweeping half a circle, let's say I only want to go a quarter of a circle with this little servo. What should I change? Anyone know? If I don't want to go the whole, the half circle, the whole range of movement. So let's go, yeah, let's go only to 90. So I can change this 180 to 90 and let's upload it. Look at the live image. So now we're uploading it and it's going to go start off with zero. And now instead of going all the way to 180, it stops there. It only goes 90 degrees. Okay. Can we make it going, go it sweep faster than this? What could make this go back and forth even faster than it is now? Delay. So can we change the delay to, let's say, half a second? So it's going to go half a second back and forth. Let's try that. It's uploading now. And now we should see it move much faster back and forth. Okay. So you could set it to any position you want. It's very important that when you start the program, you set it to the initial position. Don't just set to where you want to go. Always set it first to where you want to start at. So in other words, I could also start at 90, and then from 90, go to 180. And then I can download that too. This will be the last one I do here for. So now it'll start at 90, and then just sweep back and forth there. It's like a windshield wiper. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the intro to how to use a servo using MakeBlock. Catch me next time when I teach you about how to use a touch sensor with your RJ25 adapter. Sounds like fun.